terms and agreement on the management saying that I have created, created these in accordance with a set of rules, compiled everything together, all the assertions we've seen in a prior presentation, and the auditor then saying, hey, you, you provide me with this information so that I can do the tests necessary for me to gather the evidence necessary for me to determine whether or not you have indeed put these into in accordance with that engagement or with the criteria. So we're going to gather evidence. So the evidence is going to be on the internal controls, uh, the transactions and the accumulation transactions into the balances. Th that's what we're going to test. And note that internal controls is important here because we're not just going to test the transactions. We're going to test the controls. And hopefully if we're looking at a large company, those controls need to be strong because we're not going to be able to test enough transactions in many conditions in order to uh, have enough evidence all the time without relying to some extent on the internal controls on the checks and balances of the system. Then we have the uh, assertions, which is related to the preparation of the financial statements in accordance with the assertions, generally accepted accounting principles. We're going to test management's assertions against the criteria, that being generally accepted accounting principles. And then, of course, we're going to determine overall fairness of the financial statements we then, having made our opinion, are going to issue our audit report to uh, the users of the financial statements. Key concepts in conducting an audit. We have the concept of materiality, audit risk, and evidence. These are going to come up all the time. We want to have a firm grasp of these type of items. Materiality, audit risk, evidence. What are those items? Let's start with materiality. The size of an omission or misstatement of accounting information that makes it probable that the judgment of a reasonable person relying on the information would have been changed or uh, influenced by the omission or misstatement. So that's a lot of information right there. Let's kind of break that down. We can think about it intuitively. We'll break it down by the definition. We'll think about it intuitively. Now, the reason materiality is going to be really important is because one that we're talking about often a lot of information if you're talking about a publicly traded company you're talking about a lot of information so it's not going to be the case that we can eliminate all errors or say hey we, you know anytime any kind of question test question happens all the time which says that we guarantee this we guarantee that there's no errors in the financial statement or no we guarantee there's been no uh, fraud we guarantee that there's no any guarantee is not something an auditor would say just like that's not something a lawyer would say it's it's you just can't ever guarantee anything uh because it's it's factually inaccurate and it would be liability wise not wise <laughs> type of wording to say so any test question that says that uh, the auditor is guaranteeing anything is probably false that's that's just not going to be the case so we're always going to be seeing this term uh materiality 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 and, and when we think about the financial statements, materiality, you'll hear the same kind of idea as a reasonable person type of idea. Remember what the end result is. The users were typically thinking possibly investors. We want to make sure that there's not a material misstatement or we're looking to reduce the likelihood of a material misstatement being present, which would result in something like investors making decisions to say invest uh, when, when they would not have made that decision had that mistake not been there. So that's in essence what we're thinking about with materiality. We're saying, hey, we audited the financial statement. We have a degree of risk that we didn't catch the material, a material misstatement, but we're giving some degree of assurance that the audit would then have picked up a material error. And therefore, there's a higher degree of assurance for the users of the financial statement to depend on the numbers that actually have been provided and therefore a higher likelihood that business will be conducted, transactions will happen due to a higher degree of trust. So given that, let's go through this definition one more time. The size of, so materiality, the size of an omission or misstatement. So either something was uh, misstated, stated incorrectly, or it wasn't stated and it should have been stated. Also a mistake, of course, of accounting information that it makes it probable. So obviously probable, we have this term again, that's not specific. It's kind of a judgment term that the judgment of a reasonable person so now we have this reasonable person term. So we're taking common sense, logic kind of concept into play, relying on the information. So they're going to be relying on the financial statements would have been changed or influenced by the omission. So we're imagining they're relying on the information for something such as investment. There, If there was an omission or some kind of change that was material, 
they then would change their decision. Now, if you're talking about a publicly traded company that's making you know millions to billions of dollars a year, you can have an omission that a problem, an error that could be you know a hundred thousand dollars of revenue that wasn't stated or was stated. And given given the size of the company, you may still say that that was immaterial, which seems amazing, but it it could be possible because you if you're looking at financial statements. Uh, these big numbers, even up to a million dollars, if you're talking about really multi-million dollar uh, companies, you could have a million dollar error that if you were thinking about investing probably wouldn't be something that would influence your decision. So when we start to think about these big numbers, just realize that you could talk about big dollar terms that could be immaterial because we're looking at relationships with with the other numbers being being involved and what we would think in terms of an investment decision with regards to large, very large numbers could result in an omission that's quite large that uh, would still not influence a reasonable per person's decision-making process. So we'll get into more ideas in, later on in terms of when materiality applies, how do we know what a material number is, how do we come up with that number. Uh, these are types of things we'll talk about later.